Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So did you know that the first body control modules for Ford were introduced way back in the late 1980s? Well, back then things were a lot more simpler and pretty much plug and play, but today things have gotten a lot more complex. And this is exactly what one of my clients found out as he replaced a BCM using his IM608. He ran into this issue because the information that he saw online wasn't working when he would apply it on his tool. So in this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process on how to properly uh, approach and program and configure this BCM module. All right. This presentation is titled how to program a used BCM on a 2014 Ford Fiesta with the Autel J2534. All right. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent Autel diagnostic consultant. I align people with the right diagnostic tool strategy and give them the one-on-one -on -one support and training that you see in this presentation. So if you want to purchase your tool or if you want extra training that you're not able to get from your current supplier, head on over to alltelltech.co.za. Now this is what you're going to learn by the end of this presentation. You're going to see what tools are used to do this procedure. You're going to learn the location and removal procedure of the body control module. And then you're going to discover the OEM programming and coding strategy. And you're going to learn how to identify and resolve post programming issues. And lastly, how to program a used body control module on a 2014 Ford Fiesta. Okay. So in this uh, case study, the tools that we used were the J2534, your two keys, and your used body control module. All right. Now, background of this case study. So this client was working on a 2014 Ford Escape with a completely non-communicating faulty BCM. In effort to resolve the issue, he purchased a used BCM and attempted to configure it with his IM608 tool, following advice he found on YouTube. All right. Although the vehicle started, it triggered multiple warning lights, including along uh, various error codes. Now. Despite his efforts, he encountered several coding parameter faults, most of which were pointing back to the BCM, and he wasn't sure how to properly address these issues, and that's why he needed guidance on the correct procedure to get the vehicle running smoothly. So that's when he booked a consultation with me to receive the advice he needed to resolve the programming errors and complete the BCM uh, procedure successfully. All right, so let's find out where this BCM is located. If you look here, it's right under the passenger glove box, okay? And to remove it, the first thing we want to do is remove the instrument panel insulator, okay? Second, we wanna remove the side trim panel, okay? Third, we wanna open the glove box, okay? And then we wanna remove the glove box, okay? And then we can disconnect the BCM and then remove it, okay? Now, this is the first step which is the most important step and it's developing the programming and coding strategy with the OEM information when you're getting into programming you guys okay it's important not to rely on YouTube videos because they're not going to have VIN specific information when you're programming okay so this is the strategy that I devised for the client after looking at the OEM information we're going to first do the PMI, all right? Then we're going to do the as build data, all right? We're going to ret retrieve it online. The car configuration parameter, okay? And there's the function route. Then we're going to do the configure engine immobilizer, okay? There's the function route. We're going to perform the parameter reset, and you're going to need two keys to do this, okay? Because when we the next procedure, it's going to erase it. It's going to ask for those two keys. Okay, and then we're going to do the TPMS uh, re procedure. And then lastly, we're going to read and erase any error codes. Okay, so that's the, the strategy for this particular VIN. There will be some variations with uh, other uh, vehicles that you're working on. So just make sure you look at the OEM information. Now, step number two, we're going to identify the VIN number using the FJDF uh, S software. Okay, so let me just fast forward this a little bit. All right, 
my client works on a lot of the European vehicles, so he's not really, um, uh, he's not really quick at this software as of yet. But Ford is a very uh, user-friendly uh, interface. It's it's a really good one to get your feet wet in terms of programming, in my opinion. Okay, so we got communication with the uh, PCM. And now we're going to use a software to identify the VIN number. Okay, you can see at the bottom here, it's gathering the vehicle data. And we have the RO, this just stands for repair order. We're gonna leave that blank, it's not applicable to us. So we're gonna go ahead and click the checkbox. And then we have our VIN number, okay? Notice the digits, 2098. All right, keep that in mind. So now that we got the VIN, we're going to proceed to our next uh, step, which is executing the programmable module installation for the body control module. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click the toolbox at the upper uh, uh, corner. All right, and just to give you guys um, what these are, because we're going to be going through a lot of these. So module programming is where you're going to do your PMI or your reprogramming. Self-test is just like scanning all the modules. Your PATS function is, is any type of immobilizer special function. So where we're going to go do the parameter reset, or if you want to add keys and so forth, um, we're going to do that. And that's a 10 minute wait. And then these are just different control units that you have certain special functions. Okay. So keep that in mind because we're going to be going through a lot of these. All right. So we're going to hit uh, module programming. And then we have the PMI menu here. All right, so we're going to select that and then we're going to look for the body control module. All right, which is our fourth option right here. All right, so once he selects that, he's going to go over to the checkbox and we're going to follow the prompt. Okay, so remember, keep in mind, guys, the original module is not on. The donor one is, and that's a different VIN number. So it's not correct. We're going to go ahead and click no. Okay, we're going to click no. And once we click no, it's going to give us the opportunity to write in the VIN number. Okay. And this is where I believe the Autel wasn't able to uh, do this procedure, if I, if I can remember correctly. All right? he, when I talked to him, he said it didn't have this feature. So the method he was doing, he was just going on and doing the um, PMI on the Autel. But since he didn't get the data from the original, they couldn't transfer the VIN over. Okay. So now we got the VIN, right? We're going to follow the prompts. All right, the module is already on the vehicle, so we can go ahead and proceed uh, with the checkbox at the bottom right. And there's gonna be a sequence of turning the ignition on and off, as well as some uh, erasing and uh, programming progress bars, okay? Once this is uh, finished, uh, it's going to give us a checkbox to continue. All right, we're going to go ahead and select that. Ignition switch is off. Back on. And we've got another progress bar gathering data. Checkbox. All right, one more. Okay, so now we got a uh, confirmation screen. The BCM is now properly installed and ready for the car configuration parameters. So we're going to select the car configuration parameters. And then we're going to go to the retrieve the P PTS as build data. All right. Follow this and then um, we'll do it according to the workshop manual. Okay. So that's going to be our next step, which is retrieving the as build data through the car configuration parameter. Okay. So uh, this is um, when I clicked OK on the previous screen, you didn't see we got this error, but it's fine because we didn't finish the procedure. All right. So we're going to go ahead and click. Um, uh, programmable parameters, car, car configuration parameters, we're going to click OK. So we're going to set the ignition on, which is already on. And now we're going to uh, have several options. So there's vehicle configuration and then there's special function. Okay. Um, we need to select the vehicle configuration. Okay, if we select special function, there was nothing there. So vehicle configuration there, you can see it right here uh, as build data. All right. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to get this online. There are times where the uh, the OEM software is not able to retrieve it, and then there's a manual way to do it. Okay. All right, so make sure the VIN is correct. We do have the right VIN, so we're gonna go ahead and proceed. All right, and then, um, yep, all right, that's the VIN, 098. Okay, so now it's gonna connect to their servers. All right, our ignition switch is on. We have proper voltage. You wanna make sure you have a battery maintainer. Ignition off, back on, and then we're downloading. Okay, everything's going good. All right, so we have a good used BCM, looks healthy. Okay, all right, and we're almost done. All right, so we got a download complete. All right, we're still not done yet. Okay, ignition off. All right, and then we finish that procedure. All right, so we still have this laggering, this, uh, uh, then incorrect but we, we're not finished okay because we still have to do the next step which is configuring the CEI lock via body service function all right so that's what we're going to do now all right I'm going to click the checkbox the bottom right and then uh, we're going to go click the toolbox the red toolbox and then we're going to go into body service function CEI lock configuration okay all right ignition is on function complete turn the ignition to the off position okay so our next step is to perform the parameter reset using the patch function all right so let me start this all right we'll go back to the main screen all right we're gonna go back to the patch function all right, performing an additional key function, you'll gain security access and additional key. All right, and this is gonna be a 10 minute wait. All right, so this is not a push to start. All right, we're dealing with a basic key. All right, this is gonna take 10 minutes. All right, we're gonna fast forward it. Now we have the security access granted. All right, and then here, we're going to select the parameter reset, okay? So let's go ahead and um, I have the tech select that. All right, then you're gonna click the checkbox. You're about to perform the parameter reset. Let's click yes. All right, and then we have the operation has been successful. All right, all right, and now the module has been reset. So then we have to do the ignition, uh, executing ignition key code erase procedure. All right, so let's go back here and locate the ignition key code erase. All right, so we're gonna go right there. All right, number of keys required two. This operation has been successful. All known keys has been erased. So it erased all the previous keys and now it's going to immediately uh, ask us to register two keys, okay? And the client only had one at the time, so he had to go back and later uh, get the second key to do this procedure. So you must have the two keys, okay? And you're just gonna follow the instructions. Insert the key into the lock cylinder, turn the key on and wait six seconds. And then once you do that, we're gonna click the checkbox and you're gonna see the number of keys, uh, the status is gonna have um, the number one once that's been registered, okay? So now he's doing the same procedure uh, with the second key. And once he's followed that six second time limit, he's gonna click the checkbox and then we're gonna have the status of two. All right, all keys are programmed. All right, we're gonna turn the ignition off. Okay, so now the car's starting, all right, and everything is fine. He told me he had um, one more light. I think he had a TPMS light on. So I just wanted to erase um, any codes uh, that you know may have populated while we were programming, okay? So I'm gonna go back and uh, go to self-test. Remember self-test will scan all the modules in the vehicle, all right? And then once we click that, 
we're going to get a full vehicle health check on this BCM, okay? So don't panic, we're gonna erase these and whatever comes back up is what we need to be concerned about, okay? So, so far so good. Um, as I said, the car starts fine, it runs fine. Um, now this code came up and it wouldn't, it wouldn't clear. So I took the time to just quickly research it for the client. And what I found was um, the B12BD-55 um, is basically saying that the rear camera is not configured, okay? Which you can see here, right? So all we need to do is follow the function route, service function, lend new module initialization, and that should rectify that issue, okay? Um, and then the last step would be the uh, TPMS calibration procedure, okay? And he did this, um, you know, uh, with a different tool, and but this is the strategy, okay? Um, you want to use the sensor activation, identification, system verification, and then, um, yeah, these are just some tips and stuff, but that's pretty much it, guys. We ran through this from A to Z, and we have a fully programmed and configured BCM, all right? Professionally, all right? So, key things to remember, if the original BCM is still operational, make sure you start the PMI with it in the vehicle, all right? As it inhales the data and transfer it over to the second one. You, you always wanna do this when you're working with Forge. See if you can still have the original module, okay? Um, Next, if the original BCM isn't communicating, you'll use the Ford FJDS software. This will help you write the VIN and program the new software to the module. So if you have like, you know, a scan tool and you don't have the original, you won't be able to do any VIN writing with our Alltel products for the Ford, uh, you know, modules. You have to use the OEM software, okay? Third, Every vehicle's VIN comes with its own unique programming and coding strategy, so you always want to check the repair information uh, specific to the VIN you're working on, um, as it allows the following correct steps, which is crucial for success, uh, installation, and configuration. Okay, as I said before, YouTube is great, but when you're getting into programming, it doesn't give you all the information for your VIN number, all right? and a lot of people get frustrated with that. So always have that in hand. And then after performing the parameter reset and the ignition key code erase procedure, make sure you have two working keys. Both will be needed to register it to the BCM, all right? And lastly, in module programming, the greatest waste is time not getting started. The sooner you get the software installed on your computer, the more opportunities you'll have to attract more programming uh, events to your workshop. I don't know how many countless number of times where when I am introduced with a client and we just get the software in his computer, we start to, you know, attract people who, who have those events. Okay. So I always say it's better to uh, be ready than to get ready. So if you guys want to start programming professionally, head on over to alltelltech.co.za book the J2534 training and I'll give you uh, initial Ford installation and walkthrough as well as uh, repair information. And I do have some long-term uh, programs if you guys are really wanting to elevate your programming uh, skill set. okay? So with that guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your Friday and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.